it's Jack from Cultaholic.com back again with another news video. Adam Bacitti has done a news video earlier today. This is the second part of the news, so without any further ado, let's take a look at those headlines. First of all, we have a look at an update about a possible return to WWE for Brock Lesnar. Next up, WWE have been accused of using stock footage of fans in the Thunderdome. And finally, tragically, UK wrestler Ryan Smile has passed away at the age of 31. First of all, let's talk about Brock Lesnar and a possible return to WWE, how likely that is, when it's likely to be. Those questions were kind of vaguely answered by Paul Heyman in a recent interview uh, from famous sort of MMA journalist, the, the melter of mixed martial arts, Ariel Helwani. Heyman was asked about Brock's potential future in obviously the UFC, because that's Helwani's area of expertise, but also in WWE as well. And Heyman said, it depends on if there's a worthy challenger and enough box office appeal. Right now, he's very happy being a farmer and a magnificent father to his children. However, if there's something that WWE can offer that intrigues, motivates, or inspires Lesnar, and if the money is right and the business is solid, I'm sure he would be willing to do it. Heyman went on to say, at the moment, a comeback hasn't happened because a worthy offer isn't there. Again, the world changes with the snap of a finger. It could be tomorrow when Lesnar says, oh, that intrigues me. Again, it's not just a soundbite, but Brock Lesnar does what Brock Lesnar wants to do. Still sounds like a bit of a soundbite though. Now this is intriguing because obviously we're getting sort of close to the Royal Rumble, which is of course the start of the road to WrestleMania. It's only a few months away. Now, does that mean that basically uh, Brock Lesnar is more likely to come back and get involved because it's nearly the business end of the wrestling sort of cycle? Or does it mean that he's not really likely to because of course COVID's a thing, there's not as much of a spotlight on WWE at the moment, there's few fans in attendance and you know, I'm not all I'm saying that Brock cares about performing in front of a big arena full of fans but it all makes the product a bit different doesn't it? Not exactly what he's used to. Now obviously Lesnar hasn't been seen in WWE since losing the uh, WWE Championship to Drew McIntyre at this year's WrestleMania. Um, you know, his appearances these days are few and far between. They're stretched out quite a lot. He does a program here and then goes away for a while and then comes back. So there's every chance he could come back for, you know, next year's WrestleMania season. But as Paul Heyman has pointed out there, he apparently is quite content being a family man, sitting on his farm and basically doing what he wants to do. Next up, wrestling fan Jesse Davin tweeted uh, recently alleging that WWE is using stock footage of fans from the Thunderdome during their NXT shows at the, Capi the newly revamped, rebranded Capital Wrestling Center, this slightly more gritty, urbane look. Jesse appeared on one of the LED boards during this week's NXT and uh, was watching the anniversary edition of Dynamite at the same time. And she tweeted saying that like, hey, I'm apparently I'm in the, you know, the Thunder, apparently I'm in the Capital Wrestling Center on one of these screens, but at the same time, I'm not, I'm watching AEW, so what's going on there? However, she was previously in the Thunderdome, so it's as if WWE have taken footage of her from the Thunderdome and then used it in you know, the NXT setting to make it look like she's there in attendance or on the screen when she's actually not. So she's been moved from the Thunderdome effectively to the Capitol Wrestling Center without her knowledge. Now, various stories have picked up on this. It should apparently be noted, however, as various news sources have mentioned, that while NXT has been airing tape shows, Dynamite has been going live these past few weeks, including the Chris Jericho 30th anniversary episode. Previously, AEW was taping shows months in advance, every alternate week, but Dave Meltzer recently reported that AEW will only be taping two more shows until December, on October 28th and November 18th. So, AEW is a bit more live, NXT is a bit more pre-taped, um, I don't know whether that insinuates that Jessie might be lying or just hasn't taken into account the fact. But no, because if she's saying that she's not uh, watching the NXT show, then she probably wasn't watching the NXT show at the time. I don't know. Are NXT just using completely stock footage across the board? And is she just the first one who have pointed it out? Has there been an agreement that she somehow missed out on? There's various weird things going on here, and I'm not sure what the correct answer is. So very strange stuff there. We'll keep an eye on the situation as it develops, if indeed there are any more developments to be had. An interesting one, a strange little wrinkle in the Wednesday Night Wars, and one that could literally only happen in 2020. Like you can't, I mean, what has this year been, what has this year been doing to us? Next up, let's head to Wrestling Inc, who have a bit of an update on Andrade's WWE status. Recently, we reported that apparently Andrade, because of course he was undrafted during the draft, he was kind of fueling a bit of speculation online, maybe unintentionally, that he was gonna leave because he was posting like thank you messages, which was apparently to Zelina Vega. He was um, 
what else did he do? He posted a picture of himself with the NXT title, kind of implying that maybe he's going back down to NXT. But we recently reported that apparently Andrade is set to stay on Monday Night Raw, and then later news emerged that apparently Andrade actually has a feud lined up for him on the red brand as well, himself and Zelina Vega taking on The Fiend and Alexa Bliss in like a mixed sort of mixed tag feud, I suppose. But apparently that feud might not start, at least from an in-ring point of view, until a little way down the line, because according to Wrestling Inc, Andrade will be undergoing a minor elective procedure and will be out of action for around a month. So an elective procedure basically being surgery that he has chosen to have, a minor surgery apparently, that he's chosen to have from a pre-existing issue and now might be as good a time as any to kind of get that out of the way, recover from it, and get back to action quickly. So maybe that feud will start a month down the line. According to Wrestling Inc, he could be on the shelf for about a month, which, you know, will be a shame. He will be missed for those four weeks or so, but at the same time, it's not too long in the grand scheme of things. And I'm sure we'd all rather that Andrade get his, you know, get his body in order, you know, get his health right before continuing to push himself in the ring. And if that's the decision he's chosen to make, then all the power to him. This feud's gonna be interesting too though, isn't it? Because who's the face in that feud? Who are the faces? Is it Andrade and Zelina? Or is it Fiend and Alex? They're all heels, aren't they? I guess the more natural faces would be the ones who aren't spooky undead monsters from beyond the grave. But Andrade and Zelina are so arrogant and heelish as well at the same time. I really don't know how this is gonna go down, but it'll be an interesting one for certain. Next up, a title match for AEW Full Gear has been set and was announced on last night's AEW Dynamite. So it was during the TNT title match between Cody and Orange Cassidy that Darby Allin was announced as the challenger for the TNT Championship, taking on whoever would win that match that was going on in front of him, because he was sat in the crowd watching it as we learned of his number one contender status. However, the match was drawn, which means that Cody retains the belt, and, you know, I guess that means that it'll be Cody versus Darby at full gear. But because the match was a draw, and because Orange Cassidy didn't exactly lose, maybe he'll continue to be involved in the storyline heading up towards full gear, which of course is on November the 7th. I, I don't know, I can still see there being a few more twists and turns in the story down the line. There's also some developments in uh, two of the other title pictures on AEW as well, which begin next week and culminate at... Uh, full gear. So first of all in the tag team picture we have a four-way tag team match next week to determine the number one contenders who will face FTR at full gear and that is between, if I can get this right, the Young Bucks, Private Party, uh, John Silver and Alex Reynolds of the Dark Order and oh there was one more, Butcher and the Blade as well, Butcher and the Blade. And then in the AW world title picture scene we have a eight-man tournament again beginning next week which uh, will see the winner become number one contender and face John Moxley for the belt if he still has it by that point, who knows what can happen before then. And there's some big names in that tournament as well, I guess the favourites have to be either Kenny Omega or Hangman Page, but we've also got the likes of Penta, Phoenix, Wardlow's in there as well, Jungle Boy, Cole Cabana I think's in there too. Um, it should be a very interesting tournament, again I can't look further than either Omega or Hangman. I reckon it's going to be Kenny Omega, and I reckon he's going to beat Moxley for that belt as well, and then I reckon Hangman's going to beat Omega next year at some point. And now finally, in very tragic news, um, UK wrestler Ryan Smile has sadly passed away at the age of 31, a very, very young age, and he was such a talented guy as well. Ryan was a standout for promotions such as OTT over in Ireland and a lot of promotions here in England as well, such as Rev Pro, for example, always putting on very high-flying, fast-paced matches. He was an incredible wrestler in the ring. Uh, and it's obviously incredibly sad to hear the news. And to add to the sadness of the story, Ryan leaves behind a young child as well, and his partner, who also wrestles under the name of Alex Windsor, uh, released a statement on social media saying, on Tuesday morning, Ryan passed away after losing his battle with mental health, a battle in which he had been fighting for a very long time. I can't fathom the words to express how I'm feeling right now. To anyone who knew Ryan, whether through wrestling or on a personal level, it's with an extremely heavy heart that I have to break this tragic news. So there we go, a uh, very sad note to um, to obviously end the news video on. I believe OTT, the wrestling promotion, I believe their Twitter account have, uh, I think it was them, I think they've put up a, a kind of a fundraiser for Ryan Smile's family uh, and his, you know, obviously his young child. So um, check that out if you want to. And yeah, let's just, uh, I guess, keep him in our thoughts and let's, you know, keep the well-being of others in our thoughts all the time. So thank you very much for watching. I've been Jack from Cultaholic.com. Leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments section down below, and I'll see you very soon.